The inquiry room at Blackpool Football Club, source, inquiry video The main witnesses have now completed their evidence, and mid remaining session today is for third-party witnesses. 1817 inquiry adjourned until 9.30 a.m. tomorrow Tomorrow will be taken up with closing arguments from Quadrilla, Lancashire County Council and Roseacre Action Group barristers. 1730 inquiry adjourned until 1740 The final stage of today's hearing is to discuss the conditions which could be attached if the appeal by Quadrilla is upheld. Inquiry resumes This section of the inquiry takes more evidence from members of the public. The inspector reminds witnesses of the inquiry's terms of reference, which focus on highway safety on the three proposed routes. 1713 Mike Hill Mr. Hill, a chartered engineer, refers to evidence from Mark Lapan, Quadrilla Operations Manager, who suggested there could be a significant reduction of flow back water from the site and, therefore, a reduction in site traffic. This, Mr. Hill says, is optimistic. He acknowledges that horizontal fractured wells, as planned for Roseacre would, generally have lower flow back rates than vertical wells. Mr. Lapan said this would be expected. He isn't prepared to be definitive, Mr. Hill says. A prudent operator would plan on a worst case, he says, where the flowback rates could be as high as in a vertical section. The flowback rates at Priest Hall were 70%. This figure would significantly impact on traffic quantity and frequency and so therefore highway safety, Mr. Hill says. Mr. Hill says that Mr. LePan had suggested recycling flowback fluid, but this is a difficult process and was abandoned by other operators. Shutting in the well may cause more fluid to be absorbed but can increase the risk of seismicity, Mr. Hill says. A report by DePater and Bysh in 2011 suggested that wells should not be shut in at all. But Mr. Hill says with no shut in at all, flowback becomes unpredictable, the operator is not in control of the flowback rate, tankers could be needed to remove liquid at weekends and at night, regardless of whether Quadrilla is allowed traffic movements at these times. The Refine Research Group highlighted a 27% increase in road traffic deaths in U.S. areas where fracking begins. Mr. Hill concludes, there can be no better definition of in the national interest than ensuring the safety of the people. It is after all the number one priority and responsibility of any government. In this case, acting in the national interest, this inquiry and the Secretary of State are duty-bound to protect the people first. The inspector asks about traffic movements, Ms. Levin says that even if Quadrilla has underestimated Flobach, it won't materially affect the number of vehicle movements. Mike Hill says Mr. LePan's evidence is not correct, and even highly misleading, you need to take a precautionary approach, he says, 3,213 truck movements would be needed to cope with Flobach, most. In the first 30 days, recycling flowback has been tried in the United States, but most operators don't do it. Third Energy said they would, but then changed their mind. If the fluid comes up at night, it will need to be tankered off, there will be too much to store on site, Quadrilla will get the trucks off the site whenever it needs to. Ms. Levin says the inspector dealt with this at the previous inquiry, 1702 Gazer Frackman Ms. Levin has mentioned experience at Preston New Road. Many conditions have been breached, add anger of locals. Mr. Frackman lists incidents, he found transporters in a lay-by with number plates blanked out, police arrived to escort them to site, no charges brought. Protester involved in a hit-and-run incident, no charges brought. No skid warning signs on road to site. Wheel washing equipment never used on site, the 17th of March 22 diggers not washed, mud dropping off treads, Mr. Frackman offers samples of mud. Two car collisions caused by vehicles coming on to site from wrong direction, no charges. Aggregate came off back of Lorient Highway. Quadrilla have shown disregard to locals, protectors. Conditions are not enforced or inspected. Mr. Frackman asks if depleted uranium been used and has it been transported in cars? Mr. Frackman concludes by saying, Quadrilla are not a company built on trust. 1632 Paul Hayhurst Paul Hayhurst Source, Inquiry Video Chairman of Ellswick Council and County Councilor for Filed West Division, know the village well and use all three routes. Ellswick has suffered from HGV problems for 12 months due to Fox Brothers' operation. In one accident, a driver who had stopped to avoid an HGV was still hit by the vehicle. Gorse Farm gives the locals an idea of what the Quadrilla operation will mean. If the Fox Brothers' operation can't work safely, how will larger vehicles work? Roads are not designed for 44-ton vehicles. HGV movements from Fox Brothers have distorted figures on the Quadrilla survey. 99% of respondents to a local survey at Ellswick said they were concerned by road safety implications of Quadrilla project. 
the vehicles from Gorse Farm are generally only 10 meters in length but vehicles still cross the white lines on the bends, HGVs and cars struggle to pass each other on bends, misjudgment from either driver will lead to an accident. There are no proposals to address accident black spots at crossroads and village hall at Ellswick. At a speed of 30 miles per hour, it takes 88 feet for a 44-ton HGV to stop. Mr. Bird relies on someone sitting at a computer in London to tell him there is good visibility at the crossroads in Ellswick. As a resident, Mr. Hayhurst knows otherwise. A585 Junction Source, Google Maps Mr. Hayhurst refers to the A585 Junction, and Highways Agency note on residential development, the gaps on traffic on the main road have lessened, making it more difficult for vehicles to turn on or off the road, large vehicles using this junction will increase accidents. Ellswick was joint winner of Britain in Bloom in 2016 and won the Champion of Champions in 2017, some of the flower beds are less than 0.5 meters from the edge of the road. Problems with HGVs mean the previous organizer has withdrawn. In June, volunteers will plant out each bed. This inquiry will affect this in the future. If we have to stop our Britain and Bloom competition, this will have a major impact on the community. Mr. Bird and Mr. LePan gave assurances on driver training earlier in the inquiry. This doesn't match with Mr. Hayhurst's experience at Preston New Road, where he is on the community liaison group. There have been a large number of breaches of the traffic management plan. Quadrilla have said the drivers are not theirs, they do not recognize many of the breaches, saying that if security team decide the breach, it is not a breach, many members of the CLG feel that Quadrilla is a law unto itself, there is concern in the police about vehicles speeding on access roads. The technology exists to drill diagonally, Roseacre Road could therefore be drilled from nearby industrial sites. Ms. Levin asks about the Gorst Farm site planning applications, Mr. Hayhurst says Filed Council agreed to Volker Rail's use of the site for rail upgrades, the planning appeal for Fox Brothers is currently out for consultation, Ms. Levin asks if Fox Brothers activities at Gorst Farm are controlled with regard to number of lorry movements, timing of movements and so on, Mr. Hayhurst says only the number of vehicles is controlled. Jim Bauman Source, Inquiry Video 1629 Jim Bowman's Quadrilla's previous consultants, Arup, rejected Green Route. Roseacre Road is an access road for all the farms along its length. In the summer, the road is busy with combines and tractors. When harvesting maize the roads are covered in mud, and there was an accident caused by this last year. 1620 Karen Taylor increase of traffic, particularly HGVs will impact people, first point of concern is sharp bend onto High Street at Ellswick, near miss in February here is oncoming HGV in the middle of the road, witnessed numerous near misses, larger vehicles cross center line, junction between High Street and Roseacre Road, near miss as trying to cross High Street with HGV coming fast down the High Street, parked cars obstruct visibility, Ellswick Village Hall Source, Google Maps Roseacre Road by Village Hall, children regularly cross here, children cross without looking, frequently hear vehicle stopping suddenly, alley is access to garages, so can't be blocked or fenced. Tilton Road Narrow Road, fenced, motorcyclist paralyzed for life after colliding with tractor in 2004, roads can't accommodate larger vehicles safely. Local drivers know the road, incoming drivers won't, Fox Brothers traffic have a noticeable impact on life in the village. Routes are highly inappropriate, increased HGV traffic will affect safety. 1614 Simon Mills over 3,000 vehicles go past his door over 18 hours according to Quadrilla figures, Mr. Mills lives on High Street, Ellswick, he has done his own measurements, and found 50% to 60% less vehicle movements. Regarding HGVs, most recorded were illegal Fox Brothers vehicles, Mr. Mills has been unable to verify the Quadrilla data. Mr. Mills says Quadrilla are arguing the traffic increase is described as minor, but at the same time are proposing many mitigations, this suggests the traffic increase is significant. The school bus arrives at 3.30 p.m., discharging lots of children. Surely a dedicated access route from Roseacre to the main road network would solve many problems. Ms. Levin says the traffic data has been verified by the Highways Authority. David Galvin Source, Inquiry Video 1608 David Galvin Ellswick resident of 30 years, the roads go down as narrow as 4.7 meters width, well below the 6 meters width set out as an absolute minimum by the Freight Transport Association, vehicles will have to take full advantage of the road and cut into the verges. There is no doubt that people will see lorries coming towards them on their side of the road. Ellswick has pride in its award-winning village and doesn't want damage on its verges. Quadrilla say they will turn delivery vehicles around if a problem arises, but on most of the routes there is no scope to turn a vehicle around without leaving the route. 
the previous consultants rejected the red and green routes as unsafe. 1603 Julie Fairbank Ms. Fairbanks lives on a dangerous corner on Lodge Lane on the red route. This is the truth from my experience, these are incidents myself and my neighbor have witnessed. 9 Cars in the Hedge 3 Head-on Collisions Cattle Trailer Jack Knifed, with escaped cattle causing 11,000 pounds of damage. Most roads have limited lighting, tight bends while walking dogs she has been forced off the road on many occasions. Most rural roads don't have the foundation to deal with 44-ton lorry. Do we want a no-go area for cyclists, dog walkers and pedestrians? Fairbank invites members of the inquiry to walk her Labradors on the route to see what it is like. Andrew Viggs Source, Inquiry Video 1559 Andrew Viggs Mr. Viggs describes two near misses on the road out of Ellswick where there are two sharp bends each time he had to swerve onto the pavement to avoid HGVs. Locals are familiar with this road layup, but it can cause problems for visitors. Area is on the Lancashire Cycleway, people come to cycle because it is safe. There are limited overtaking options, even for a car driver, very difficult for lorry drivers. Many people are around on the local roads during the day. If Quadrilla send lorries down these roads, there will be more accidents. 1549, Trevor Loftus Trevor Loftus Source, Inquiry Video has an HGV license, Mr. Loftus raises concerns over the Thistleton T-Junction, this is a serious concern for many families, Highways England has commented on the cumulative effect of housing developments on traffic at this junction, the Quadrilla proposal should be considered in combination with other causes of traffic increase. There is an issue at the junction where those right turning out of the junction can have difficulties due to steady traffic on the main road. Mitigations such as roundabouts are not feasible as they would add extra delays to the main road. Traffic on the A585 has a 50 miles per hour limit at the junction, but many cars go faster. There are many near misses at this junction. Mr. Bird's accident statistics appear to differ from those of Highway England. 1542 Annabelle Hassel Annabelle Hassel Source, Inquiry Video The owner of Ellswick Equestrian Center, she says she would rather use bridleways, but there is no clear network. Ponies are ridden on the Quadrilla route every day of the year. There have been several incidents due to haulage company at Lodge Lane, including a horse bolting due to a speeding HGV. This was a near miss, another near miss caused a horse to panic, and the horse had to have extra training. One bad experience can last a lifetime for a horse. There are large agricultural vehicles they have to deal with but they are driven by friends and neighbors who are careful as they pass. We stay off the road during harvest, as there are more contractor vehicles on the road. The inspector asks if horses can use footpaths, Ms. Hassel confirms that they cannot. 1535 Catherine Riceley Ms. Riceley questions the figures on traffic movements. In June and July last year, when the surveys were done, there were peaks in movement due to activity by Volcker Rail, working on the Preston to Blackpool line. Ms. Riceley has done her own counts recording 31 HGV movements over 12 hours. Using her figures, Quadrilla will increase HGV movements by 161%. Ms. Riceley submits a photograph taken last Friday, showing an accident in Ellswick. Not all accidents are reported, Ms. Riceley's mother had her car written off and was injured after a collision with an agricultural vehicle, this accident was not recorded. Ms. Levin asks what year her mother's accident occurred, Ms. Riceley said her mother was traumatized by the incident and has not driven since. 1528 Albert Riceley I regularly see HGVs driving at excessive speeds, the pavement comes down to just 48 centimeters in places, and with a leaning wall many pedestrians are forced to walk in the road. Mr. Riceley is a member of the Canoe Club which has facilities at the Hand and Dagger Pub. To save crossing the road, the club have had funding to build steps down to the canal from the pub, canoes are unloaded at the side of the road by the pub, boats have to be turned out into the carriageway to be carried down the steps to the canal, there will usually be at least two boats. Members of the club meet midweek as well as at weekend, children come every day during school holidays. Local people know these roads, so please listen to them. Ms. Levin asks what time of day do people go, Mr. Riesling says people go on all days of the week, Ms. Levin asks about where the boats are stored, Mr. Riesling says most boats are stored at home. 1524 Dara Clayton Dara Clayton Source, Inquiry Video Member of a Cycle Group, and her group cycles seven days a week, some members will stop cycling if the Quadrilla site goes ahead. As well as HGVs, there will be many other vehicles generated by the project. The main concern is meeting lorries as a cyclist, Quadrilla should be more concerned about passing cyclists rather than passing other lorries. 
Many young families live in Aylswick. Children and young people are encouraged to cycle. Young people will not be able to cycle or visit their friends on foot. The Aylswick Wheeler Cycle Club may close. 1519 Martin Clayton Martin Clayton Source Inquiry Video An illegal lorry park has meant that a large number of lorries and low loaders move through Ellswick at all hours. Mr. Clayton encountered a large low loader coming towards him on the wrong side of the road at 6.30 in the morning, he had to mount the pavement to get out of the way. This is not about driver training, the bends are too small for large lorries to get round safely. Mr. Clayton's wife was approaching the left turn to Thistleton, in the dark, she saw headlights coming towards her, again, she had to pull onto the curb, the lorry had failed to negotiate the corner and was driving down well over the white line. 1508 Ian Phillips Ian Phillips Source Inquiry Video Mr. Phillips has lived on the high street at Ellswick for 20 years, and has always felt the roads to be safe. In the last six months, there have been six incidents, all on routes proposed for Quadrilla HGVs. Mr. Phillips' daughter regularly drives on the blue route. In a recent incident, she met an HGV traveling down the center of the road. She slowed and drove off the road into a ditch to avoid the vehicle. This raises questions of road width and enforcement. Later Mr. Phillips' daughter was forced to make an emergency stop when meeting an HGV on the blue route. She thought she was going to die. Given the number of sharp bends and narrow roads, how will these issues be resolved? The number of cars parked on the high street at Ellswick has increased significantly, this is on the red and blue route. In another incident on the high street, Mr. Phillips only avoided a collision by swerving off onto a side road. Mr. Phillips also encountered an HGV at the Thistleton T-junction, on the wrong side of the road as it prepared to turn, a motorcycle coming the opposite way narrowly avoided a collision. The key is enforcement of regulation, will road users be safe, if Quadrilla are allowed to use these routes, I believe lives will be at risk. Rose Acrewood Fracking Inquiry Day 1 Rose Acrewood Fracking Inquiry Day 2 Rose Acrewood Fracking Inquiry Day 3 Rose Acrewood Fracking Inquiry Day 4 Rose Acrewood Fracking Inquiry Day 5 Rose Acrewood Fracking Inquiry Day 6 Rose Acrewood Fracking Inquiry Day 7 Rose Acrewood Fracking Inquiry Day 8